How's it going everyone? It is me Deluxe here and we have our FIFA 23 Team of the Year vote. I'm obviously going to be voting for this. I haven't put up FIFA content in a while, but I obviously want to be able to do this. And who knows, maybe you'll see my Team of the Year vote in an FM video here coming up. Be on the lookout for that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get right into it. Starting off with the goalkeeper. Could go with Emmy Martinez. Could go with player like Allison or Ederson, the Brazil, Allison, the Brazil number one. Both, you know, did the double. Uh, Liverpool did. Ederson obviously winning the Premier League with his club, but I got to go with the Champions League winner. I mean, he's he made he was the man of the match, I believe, for the World Cup. I mean, not the World Cup for the uh, Champions League final, and then you know making those important saves throughout the tournament uh, to keep his team in it. Moving along, there's a lot of options here in the center back positions. A lot of players I can go with. A lot of players on the full back positions as well. And there's one easy one for me, and you probably already know who it is. It's a man by the name of Hakimi of PSG. Solid, solid player. Definitely deserves to be in there. Uh, there's a few players I can mark off the list already. I don't think I'm going to put Marquinhos in. The uh, PSG in Brazil didn't really do enough for him to get in. <clears throat> Jao Cancelo is going to be my left back. I could have gone, I heavily considered Alfonso Davies. You know what? You know what? We're taking Cancelo out. Alfonso Davies got Canada their very own first goal return, since their return to the World Cup. And he helped them qualify within this calendar, last calendar year as well. He is going to be my left back team of the year. Obviously dealt with injuries throughout the season. Could have also been a shout for this man at the left back, Theo Hernandez, as well. But Alfonso Davies and the impact he's had for Canada is just way too important for me not to pick him. I know he's dealt with injuries. I know that might be a terrible take to some people, but it's who I'm going to go with. Uh, I could go, I considered putting Trippier in just because of his impact for Newcastle, not so much based on his individual performances, but the impact he's had and the way his team has uh, improved. Uh, if you, if this were to be a team of the, you know, most valuable player to a team. I think PSG would survive without Hakimi. They would have won just as much as they did last year without him. Newcastle would not be where they are without Trippier, basically, is my way of putting it. Uh, if you look at, for example, uh, another player who I think has had an influential impact is Givardiel, and he's going to be my pick for the right center back position. And it would be absolutely disrespectful of me not to include. Virgil van Dyke at my left center back position. These midfield positions, I'm going to start off with Kevin De Bruyne. Pretty easy pick. I mean, come on now. Who's realistically going to get in over him from any team whatsoever? And then I'm actually going to pick... Oh, this is such a hot take. This is so going to get me absolutely just flamed in the comments. I really don't care. Ukai Osaka is one of the best 11 players in the world. Why you laughing for? I'm being serious. I'm being serious. No, you see, no, you see, I'm talking facts here. I don't do if, buts and maybes. I do absolutes. And, you know, like, if your aunt's had balls, she'd be your uncle. But she doesn't, so she's not. Do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm trying to say? You put him, he is in the best 11 for me. You put him anywhere on the pitch. He is, I mean, man played left back when he was younger. I put him, I think he's better than Alfonso Davies. I think he's better than... Uh, Hakimi, I think he's obviously different position, if it'll let me move him. Uh, I think he's just the most important player for Arsenal. He's currently first in the league. He was England's best player at the World Cup, without a doubt. He is just so important and instrumental to the way Arsenal play. He is, without a doubt, one of the best 11 players in the world, and the debate isn't even there anymore. Moving along, and here is another one that maybe people will disagree with. I'm going with Valverde. Uh, I could obviously see people making a case for players like Modric, players like Cruz, players like uh, Kimmich. I could see the argument for a Rodri. I could see the argument for Bellingham or Berea. But these are the three best midfielders in the world. The only player that would come close is Bellingham switching out for Valverde. But for me, those are the three best midfielders in the world right now. Obviously, Right winger is really where Saka plays, but he's going in that midfield role because that's what EA put him as. So he's going to be playing there for me. Going into the right wing position, I mean, this one's pretty easy for me personally. I mean, come on now. 
who else are you going to put there, really? I mean, he's the best player in the world. He's going to win the Ballon d'Or again. <sighs> Sorry about that. He's going to win the Ballon d'Or. And, I mean, there's just no questions asked. He's the best player in the world. He's the best football player in the world. Play the clip. He's the best football player in the world. The next player was picked. The best football player in the world. Uh, play the clip. He's the best football player in the world. Benzema. And, I mean, come on now. You can't not include Benzema in this. The role he played in getting Real Madrid into the Champions League final and winning it. I mean, you have to go with him. Uh, I don't think there's any questions. And the last player, really no debate here either, I think. I think the front three is the most set in stone it can be. Benzema, Mbappe, Messi as the top three players. Obviously, I think I'm going to get a lot of flack for this one. Being an Arsenal fan, I understand. I'm going to get a lot of flack for this one. I think people will disagree with this one and go with Theo Hernandez or uh, Jao Cancelo. So I don't think he'll win. I think I think Gavardiol is going to be extremely underrated in the voting. I think he deserves it. Courtois, I could see losing for a player like Allison. I could see Emmy Martinez getting in over him just because of World Cup bias. Right back position, I don't think Hakimi has any competition. Reese James has been injured so much. Player like Frimpong is too, uh, doesn't have the name. Uh, player like Trippier doesn't have the, the pool to get that vote. Gavardiel doesn't have the pool to get the vote either, but he's, he's getting my vote. Uh, and Van Dyke, I think, will win. I could see this being the actual defense, but I am going to go with those two. And uh, yeah, so that is my vote. Let me know if you guys agree, disagree. You know, obviously, you know, picks like Saka, Davies, Gavardiol. Uh, let me know what you guys agree and disagree with. I mean, maybe you don't even have Benzema in there. Maybe you don't think Benzema is one of the top strikers in the, is the top striker in the world. Maybe still go with Lewandowski. Maybe you go FIFA related and you just pick Neymar anyways at striker. You could pick Holland. Holland could easily be in with a shout. Uh, you could still pick Mo Salah, Hyun Son, you know, Giroud. You could pick Giroud to play that striker position. But let me know if you guys agree, disagree, who you'd put in, who you'd take out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Y'all take it easy. I'm out.